So recently I've noticed that my TikTok for you page has been getting very vanilla. And by that I mean there's a lot more white people. Now let me explain. It seems like TikTok has been recently showing me more content by expats or tourists exploring our hawker culture, going to tourist traps like La Passat, or as the tourists would call it, La Passat. And then you also have some of them enjoying our public transport while clearly not knowing how to wear a mask indoors even though it's been years since the pandemic started. While some of these folks have not been spared by street interviewers and ended up getting caught off guard. Fair price or Sheng Xiong? I don't know what any of those are. Others seem to be better at assimilating into our local culture. Music bought Uncle Raymond's, yo. But I don't think it's all that bad because with the reopening of our borders, it seems like this exchange of cultures has resumed and our cultural exports have only grown stronger. Why not? You're nothing but a prostitute. How dare you call me a prostitute? But you are! So with all these TikToks surfacing on my For You page, I decided to go down this rabbit hole to explore what expat life is like in Singapore according to TikTok. And we're going to talk about it today. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe. According to my analytics, 69% of you guys are still not subscribed and honestly that's very shocking. I mean it's real simple. All you gotta do is press those buttons down below right now and best of all it's free. I mean look, you don't have to but it would be a lot cooler if you did. Now full disclosure, I don't pretend to know who these people are. Some of them might be expats, permanent residents, tourists, exchange students, all of the above. But I'm not ICA, so I don't know any of that. So without further ado, let's dive right in. It's Friday night in Singapore. And I went out this evening and I met a new guy who happens to be an expat. And I was talking to him about what it's like being an expat man dating in Singapore. And what was his answer? He exclusively dates Singaporean or other Southeast Asian nationalities. I guess what she's trying to get at is that some of these expat men might have a case of yellow fever. Who knows? And he said this, back home he rates himself a 7.5 and in Singapore he rates himself a 9. I don't know what you Singaporean ladies are doing but you could do so much better. To all you ladies dating out there, take what you will from this piece of advice that she has to offer because I don't pretend to know anything at all. I'm single, but not available. Here's what's at the top of my shortlist if I were to choose a Singapore-inspired baby name. First up on my list, which I mentioned previously in one of my TikToks, is I think the name Kaya would be the cutest little baby girl's name. Naming your child after food is a bit strange. Like, I think it's pretty common to name your pets after food items, but for a baby? I don't know about that. Second on my list, also a girl's name, I think Luxa. It's like very foxy, very mysterious, very chic. Luxa? I'm just thinking of all the ways people at the playground are gonna use that name, come up with a rhyme scheme, and then insult you with the same name. I guess some food names should stay as food names. <laughs> she also had another option for a girl name, which was Marina, you know, after Marina Bay, which I can kind of see making sense. Definitely making more sense than Kaya or Laksa for sure. Now for a little Texan-Singaporean hybrid, we've got Boone. Not Boone like, just Boone. Um, still inspired by Singapore MRT stations and buildings and stuff like that. Okay, I'm kind of on the fence for this one because Boone actually kind of makes sense if you spell it out as B-O-O-N-E. So Boone from Boon Lay, I guess, isn't too far off. The last boy's name on the list um, is... Well, I would pronounce it Sean. I believe in Singlish it's pronounced Sian. That would be a more girly version, I think. Calling your child Sian, isn't that just setting them up for failure? In my mind, Sian sounds nothing like Sean, and Sian doesn't seem girly at all. But you know what? Whatever floats your boat. You want to know what it's like in Singapore? You can leave like a thousand dollar bike there with a speaker, no lock. Just leave it right there and nobody will touch it. I feel like that if that was in New York, that thing would be pieced out in like 10 minutes. Singapore. I think this is one of those cases where it's something that we see so common every day that we kind of don't really notice it anymore. And I think that's why we kind of take things for granted, especially how safe it is in some parts of Singapore where you can just leave things around like that. But you know what? I'm actually more interested to find out whose dog was there in the background because it seemed like there was a lot more going on. And I want to know what the story was about. So yes, I know that choping with your wallet is a thing, but this particular wallet has been sitting here for over 10 minutes. One, I don't think it takes that long to get Kaya toast, and two, that level of trust though! Okay, so a few things. Why did she know it was 10 minutes? Like, was she timing how long it is out of concern or out of interest in stealing it for herself? No idea. I think when it comes to chopping seats and the hawker centre, there are levels to this. I mean, I think the most basic level is to use tissue paper packets or your name card, but leaving your wallet behind is definitely living life on the edge.
I think it's pretty nice of the person who found this earpiece and then went through all the trouble of putting it in a bag, putting up the sign and pasting it all there. But I don't know if this is going to be claimed or just taken away because it seems like it's a free for all at the lobby and I'm pretty sure someone might just walk away with it. You gave me home like nowhere else. Feel safe. Okay guys, I'm scared. I have to stop. What is that? What is going on? I think she wrote this song to celebrate National Day, so she really went out of her way to compose the lyrics, film the music video, and then pull out what looks like a Giordano-inspired wardrobe. It's just too much and it's really confusing. I don't know if she's just feeling very patriotic about Singapore, or she's trying to prove to ICA that she deserves a PR status, but more power to her. Okay, this next one I think is an exchange student whose whole thing is trying out different McFlurries all over the world. Let's just take a look. I'm here in Singapore, Singapore with the mud pie McFlurry. Check this out. Okay, hold up. Singapore, Singapore. That doesn't sound right. I guess he said it because the city and country names are the same, but it just sounds really strange hearing it out loud. I mean, if I were to introduce myself to someone who is not from around here, I don't know if I would want to say, hi, I'm from Asian Singapore. Nice to meet you. Like I might regret sharing that kind of information. Never heard of this flavor, so let's give it a shot. You know, with the scenery out here, isn't that beautiful? Has to be a 9 out of 10. Okay, that's a pretty high rating, but eating a McFlurry at Gardens by the Bay, not the typical scenario that I would see myself in for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. The finance girl in Raffle. Yeah, so a couple of questions. Where is Raffle? Who is Raffle? Why is Raffle? The immigration officer, who looks like she's just stepped off the runway, which, good for her. The hostess at Salavi. Now I'm starting to notice a pattern over here, and it seems that according to him, there's plenty of fair-skinned Chinese girls all around. I don't know what that's all about, it's probably got a lot to do with him. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot to unpack over there, but maybe someone should have pointed out to him that Singapore actually is a multi-racial society. Just a suggestion. Y'all, the Singapore airport has these little shopping carts all over the place, so you don't have to carry your luggage. I haven't seen this in other airports. At least not so accessible. Wait, really? That's interesting. I've never heard of that before, because how would people go around airports with their huge-ass heavy luggage if there weren't a trolley? I thought that was like a given at the airport. What flabbergasted me as a British living in Singapore? Girl! This audience is you right here? They don't smell like roaches in here or nothing. Okay, so in case you don't get what's going on, it's basically this guy who's trying to clean the belt of the escalator. I didn't realize that this was something unique to us because I kind of assumed that this was how all escalators were cleaned. But even so, getting flabbergasted by a guy who's just doing his cleaning duties is maybe a bit of an overreaction. My style, six months after Tourist. in Singapore. Cute. My style, one half year hot, after living half in cold. Singapore. My style T-shirt, shorts. Yeah, there was a lot of text flying everywhere and too much audio dialogue going on, but I get what she was trying to say. Her style was getting more casual as the days and months went by. Makes sense because of the climate that we have here. It's perpetually summer and then it rains whenever it wants to rain. But I guess she was just really close enough to reaching the peak level of Singapore fashion. All she really needed was maybe an admin tee or an OCS singlet if she wanted to try it out. Or the other option would be to just wear an oversized ADLV shirt and FPTs. Take your pick. Hey guys, it's our day nine here in Singapore and today we are sharing a life hack. Ooh, life hack. Nine days in Singapore and already a life hack? Well, you had my curiosity, now you have my attention. When we first got here, we were surprised to find out that gum is illegal in Singapore. But apparently, you can just buy it at Guardian. I was at Guardian yesterday and bought myself this gum called nicotine gum and it tastes really good. I literally can't stop chewing it. Yeah, I'm not sure if nicotine gum is the kind of gum he was looking for. But man, I don't know this guy's story. Maybe he really is in need of nicotine gum, I don't know. But I guess if you were to read the fine print, he would know that the sale of gum in Singapore is illegal. I think you can consume it, but then don't do crazy sh like just bring in a whole bag of it from Malaysia, I guess. Things you can't do in Europe, but apparently it's okay in Singapore.
Ah, I see, leaving your shoes outside your house. I guess again, it's one of those things that we kind of take for granted here, where it's actually really safe to leave your shoes outside the house without worrying about it getting stolen. But there are exceptions to this rule because there have been cases before that have been reported in the news of people getting their underwear stolen by random people in the block. So I guess there's a very small range of items that are considered safe to leave outside your house. Underwear, maybe not one of them. Greatest double standard in Singapore, being able to party with hundreds of half-naked strangers while getting a $2,000 fine for not wearing a mask on the taxi ride home. What is this one? Day 4 already got double standard. How are they going to reach day 9 and find a life hack? No idea. But if this is true, then I'm pretty shocked that the fine is $2,000 because that seems like a lot. But this then begs the follow-up question, how is it only day 4 and they've already partied with hundreds of half-naked strangers? What is in their itinerary? I'm really curious to know. Y'all, I just looked up the place that I have been living the last three years. Wait. Have I been staying in a brothel? <laughs> oh no! The review says, 5 stars. Good place to find good time with ladies. Shok shok. Why would he say shok shok like that? It sounds like that commercial, I love my dodo shok shok. Now I'm starting to get a little worried for this girl's well-being and safety because do people still think that this is a good place to find a good time with girls? Like how is this Google Maps location not updated at all? Girl, you better move out. So after watching all these TikToks and hearing what all these angmos have to say, I guess it's safe to say that we take certain things for granted here like how it's safe to leave your valuables out in the open without worrying about it being stolen or that for some reason, the word Boon from Boon Lay is somehow a solid baby name for a boy. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Singapore expat life or if you're an expat yourself, do share your experiences in the comments as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye! YOLO Say no no YOLO YOLO You only live once